We are exactly at the middle of the course. That's two weeks and we still have 10 classes and we will have next 10 classes. So what we have seen for the time being is single species dynamics and competition and predation. And so now we want to uh, rediscuss some points about competition. Um, so first thing is intraspecific competition. So intraspecific competition we saw at the second class, I think, was has been modeled as being described by the logistic equation. Okay. The logistic equation. Population with a certain intrinsic growth rate, and then the population has a certain carrying capacity. And the solution to this equation in time is just some initial condition and approaching the carrying capacity. Okay. So what was how did we arrive at that? We arrived at that because we had Malthus first. And Malthus is grow forever. Then we postulated that any population will have a maximum population size, okay? which is reasonable. Well, it's not intrinsic to the population. It's intrinsic to the population in a certain place with a certain number of resources. So. And then we kind of said the easiest way to modify Malthus' equation is just to put this negative term here, and then we, we even solve the equation, and then we have this. So this is kind of, of phenomenological thinking, because we didn't describe intraspecific competition. We are just saying the population is going to a constant value, and that's it. Now, in the last classes about predator prey dynamics, we learned more things about um, which, which I want to rephrase now because it's kind of usual jargon resource. Uh, um, uh, consumer resource relation. So you have a consumer and a resource. So this is a little bit more modern language than predator prey. It could also be uh, um, a res uh, the research group. The resource could be um, abiotic, for instance, which does not have mm, actual sense to say predator prey. Okay, it could be water or something. Okay. So cons so we learned that. One population, now what we want to see is, we want to, to, to write something for the consumer and, and its resource. And, and obviously, if, if I, as I was doing in the, in the previous classes, this should have something to do with interspecific competition. Okay? So, Let's go back to the model that we so first we wrote down the, the lotka volterra model, okay? So then everything oscillates all the time, but we already abolished this model, okay? But the simplest, uh, in, uh, simple way to, to modify the model, the first one that we did was by introducing a carrying capacity for the prey, which in our new, new language is introducing a carrying capacity for the resource. Therefore, the resource is limited. Okay. So, um, a minute. Okay. So, 
do not cover terra width with um, with a current capacity for the uh, victim was something like this. I think I used alpha, but if it's not alpha, I mean, it's not important uh, which, which letter we use. And then there was some alpha chi p times phi, which is the, was the efficiency minus some mu times p, okay? So, you have a population of, of consumers, which are the predators, okay? and the population of resources, which are the victims, okay? So, this should show effects of inter-specific competition, okay? But now, when we look for this, and we go back to our little code. That is, we know, let me see if this will work. We know that this, this system displays oscillations. So this seems to be in contradiction with the, the, with the logistic equation. The logistic equation never has any oscillation. It just goes to K. But well, if I run this for enough time, because here, let's say if we put like 500 here. Hmm? Oh, oh, sure. So, that's back to what I, so this is the logical voltaire equation. And um, with, with current capacity, the one I just wrote, and if, if you take a look at the solutions, then you have this kind of oscillations, okay? So, and if I run this for a longer time, I'm, I'm running only 50 time steps. If I run for 500, or not 500, let's say 150 should be enough. I will see that these oscillations damp out and go to stable equilibria. So the stable equilibria is something which resembles this one. Okay? Because here you go to carrying capacity. And here you'd say, I have resources and I have, and I have, that's the resource, that's the consumer. And after transient, I go to some, some value here, around four, which is the carrying capacity. Yeah, where's the mic? So I was wondering uh, last week about these oscillations, and I was kind of thinking maybe we mostly see relationships in nature that are already like over in the... Over the transit. Over uh, the... On this side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't finding the words. Yeah. Um, so, w would I be correct assuming that? Well, it is. So, these are partial truths, okay? Many, many systems where we see predator prey relations are at stable equilibriums, okay? Which is like this, right? How did they get there? We don't know, because, okay? But, but for sure, there are also situations where you have oscillations that do not decay. And it's mainly possible to see in, see that actually there exists this kind of thing in the lab. Remember I showed you the Didinium and Paramecium, they actually have cycles. And there are populations in nature that have cycles and so on. So the, pop, the, 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 the cycles, the oscillations exist, but well, many situations and because there are so many relations also, maybe you, you will be in a stable equilibrium and that's it. So if maybe you can only, sh when, you, when, you, when you go out, you look and you're already here, for instance, okay? So, okay, but let's, let's go back. We want to know now, 
what's the point about the logistic equation which, which we introduced carrying capacity we are so happy to have a carrying capacity and so on nice equation and now I say well this system of consumer resource dynamics is actually a, a competition for the resource by the consumers so why does it not have the same behavior as the logistic equations and well then you could say okay the, less, the logistic equation was uh, anyhow was just some kind of mathematical adaptation maybe we should throw this to completely uh, out and, and stay only with the consumer resource dynamics okay? so this is not totally true and let's see now let us play around a little bit. You see, these uh, oscillations, um, let me see, damp out, but let us put k smaller. You see, it's smaller k. Now we don't need to have 150 points. I can get 100, OK? OK, smaller. You barely see any oscillations because the damping, the, the, this, this effect of amplitude decrease, is so strong that it's practically just one. Okay. Again, these here, these oscillations cannot be described by the logistic equation because these fact here, like this, let's say that the stable equilibrium points, uh, I, we could say that the predator here is at its carrying capacity. But before getting there, there's this hump here, which is a kind of called of overshooting. Overshooting means it got over, you get a population bigger than carrying capacity, and then you go. So, okay. Again, we are still in trouble with um, with um, um, with with our with our logistic equation because we logistic equation has a carrying capacity has a fixed population size after some time but does not show this kind of thing and so we have to reconcile things somehow unless we just abandon the the, the the logistic equation, which we actually don't want so much because it's so simple. Okay, so uh, let me just take a look here. Okay, capacity. Um, the victim. Ba -ba 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 -ba. just a minute okay let us take a look here let's go back to with our larger carrying capacity like 50 get back here to the oscillations but let's play with R so you have typically in this equation you have two two different time scales okay so let's talk about time scales in order to talk about time scales uh, let's look at the parameters and see which parameters are related to time. Actually, well, all of them have to be, but I'm most interested in R, so I, let me write this. Remember, R, this means the units of R. R, so remember R, this side has to be equal to this side. And here's the first term is R times V. I already have V here. Therefore, R has to be 1 over time. And another one is this here. The units of mu is 1 over time. In this simulation, R is 2. 
and the mu is, I think it's the d, which is 1. So they are pretty much comparable. Yeah? So there's no, I mean, one's the double of the other, but it's not like 10 times, 1,000 times. Let's play around a little bit with this, OK? So uh, um, let me see. Let's say r is 5. So remember, here are the oscillations. But what will happen if r is still the same oscillations? That's a really big r. 50 run. So I, I have put, I have changed the, the, this guy here. And I made it much more, m much larger than this one. Okay? What means this? R being large means that uh, the, the typical times in R being large means that the increase of the of this guy, of the victim, is very fast compared to the decay of the predator. Okay. So playing with this, you see that we got less oscillations and got more or less quickly. Let us plot it for less time. More or less quickly, we get, we get here. So clearly, if r and mu have different, are not on the same scale, then the approach to the equilibrium is, is faster. Okay. So this is, should serve as inspiration, let's say, um, to look for the consumer reserves dynamics in certain limits of the parameters. And so not anymore the look for the solutions of the, so of the general solutions and general behavior of this uh, system of equations, but to certain limiting cases. And that's what, uh, what we want to do right now. So, and one, one of those limiting cases, which is uh, uh, interesting, is the case where the reserves regenerate much faster than the consumer than the consumer is able to grow. So that there is a certain typical time for the consumer to grow. Okay? So the population of the consumer grow, maybe you will feel the, see the effects, say, after some, some one year, or months, or years, maybe their resource is much fast, faster. Maybe the, the resource regenerates on, on, a, on a, a scale of weeks and not of days. This is possible. And this is typically when you have <laughs> herbivory, for instance. So it, usually the, the, the plants have, have a, a, a time to go back to the equilibrium uh, much faster than the, the animals there that are eating them. Right? So let's, you will, we will do a calculation and the, I will, what I want to show you is that in a certain, in, the li in this limit of, you have very different time scales, then actually the logistic equation will be a good description. Okay. So this is a little bit, there are some, it's, it's a little bit subtle with the mathematics. It's not difficult, but uh, pay attention because we will do now what we do, we'll be interested in approximations. And so first of all, let us write our equations. And I will use different letters because I want to, I mean, to go to the traditional notation. Um, 
that is used when, uh, when you describe consumer resource uh, dynamics. So we will say that n of t is the consumer and r of t is the resource. And now we have to make some hypothesis about the resource and on the consumer we will have the u kind of usual equations. So first thing, I will assume that the consumer, that the resource is limited, sure, and it's kind of biotic resource. It's so the, the, um, the resource itself regenerates, okay? And the second part, I will assume a different thing. For instance, abiotic case, like rain, for instance, which does not come it's from rain. It's, it's kind of external. But for the time being, I just want to have this usual thing here with a carrying capacity for the resource. And the resource has to be somehow prayed, or consumed. I will use a, a C as a constant times R times N. Lotka Voltaire linear Honig type 1 functional response, okay? So this will have some efficiency, which I will use B times C. B is the efficiency, R times N minus M times N, which is, which is the, the typically can be thought that if there's nothing here to consume, then they will die out at a certain rate. Okay? can also be thought co connected to the lifespan. Okay? So, okay, so this is our equation. And now, I would like to introduce this situation where the regeneration is faster than the uh, than, than the typical time scale connected to n. In order to do so, I so we, we want actually that m is much smaller than r. Okay, so r is regeneration of the resources is fast compared to 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 n. Now. In order to do this, we have to do what is called a rescaling, right? Rescaling of a variable. So, if you are not uh, used to this, it's simply the following. Any, if I have any variable, okay, time or whatever, population, I can always multiply this by some constant, okay? So, and define a new variable, this, the, the old variable with times a constant, okay? So I will define a new time variable, which I will write down as tau instead of t. And I will use a time variable, that tau, which is non-dimensional. It doesn't have any dimension. And one way is writing the time, that's the usual time, times m, because m is 1 has dimensions one over time. Therefore, this is a dimensionless variable for time. Okay? So, okay. What does it mean? Well, I have in the equations derivative dn dt, not dn d tau, but I now want to use dn d tau. So, um, I have to write down d dt, that's time variable, is what? The, the derivative uh, this times d tau dt, which is just m d tau. Okay? So I will now plug this in into these equations. Okay? So it's a math mathematical manipulation, but it's a mathematical manipulation that will just become clear 
that this will simplify lots of things. Okay? So now I have to write down this equation for the substituting t per tau. So the first one here is dn dt, but dn dt is now m dn d tau. Okay? So I am considering that every everything now depends only on tau. Okay? And tau and t are just two time variables, and there's just a multiplicative constant between them. Okay? Then this will give you this. B, C, R, N, minus M, N, which I can simplify I, by dividing by M, okay? Divided by M, both sides. Yep. The mic, mic, mic. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I followed the, what was the intention of inserting this tau in the equation. It what will turn out that this will, this will appear next because we want uh, to, to find a way in the equations to compare M and R. So I want to find some way to have M divided by R much smaller than one. And this is a trick. And this is in order to explain that the regeneration of the resource is faster than the... Than this, is an or, uh, uh, this is in order to provide a way, you know, these equations have bad oscillations, everything. Now I want to look how the how this the, these um, solutions look like when the regeneration of the resource is much faster than the time span of lifespan of the of the consumer. So it's a limit. Okay. So it is this is called a multiple scale or a two time scale problem. What what is a two time scale problem? There are things that happen on a fast and a slow scale. So the fast scale is the regeneration of the resource. And the fast and the slow scale is, is the, the increase of the consumer. So that, that's what we want to explore. Okay? So you can also think that, um, it, what, well, you will be interested mainly in in what? In the, in the slow time scale. Because we don't want to discuss all this very fast uh, regeneration. Okay? This is not very interesting. We, will, we want to look at the dynamics, say, of the consumer, okay? and what should happen on, a, on, a, on, on the slow time scale. So in order to have the slow time scale, let's look at this tau again. Okay? So let me let us think that um, um, let us say time t goes from zero to ten. Okay, just okay, ten times that. Now say m is small like 0.1. Therefore, on the time t scale, I go from, from 0 to 10, and on tau scale, I go from 0 to 1. Therefore, tau is much slower than t. Okay? And we want to study the dynamics on the scale of tau. Therefore, I'm supposing that these guys now, all of this function at that time, are, the, are on the scale tau. So it's a way of finding to scale out the fast time, which we are not interested in, and we are interested in just looking how is the dynamics of the consumer 
on the slow time scale. On the fast time scale, you will see the regeneration of the resource happening very fast, but we want to focus on the consumer. And then we want to see if and somehow this consumer will go to something like, like a carrying capacity and how this is related, related to all these parameters. So, now we have the, one of the equations here. Let us keep this equation here, which is the equation for the consumer on the slow time scale. But still, we have the R here, OK? So the R, so it's still coupled. So the second equation here will be um, M times dr d tau equal to r r 1 minus r over k minus c r times n. And I will now divide both sides by r. So I will have m over r dr d tau equal to r, no, equal to r, 1 minus r over k minus c over r, r times n, OK? And this guy, this fraction here, I will call it the epsilon. I suppose it's much smaller than 1, right? So R is R. R is so f so 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 big compared to M, which is this hypothesis of rapid regeneration of the resources, that this this fraction is a small number. Okay. So now, in the limit of very small epsilon, okay, I could say this guy is zero. This is very small. If this is zero, there's a relation between R and N coming off this side. Okay? So now I will change a little bit the notation. So if I therefore if this here, this this part okay, is small in the sense that you have the epsilon here, then it is a good approximation, so approximation, to consider this 0 and this, therefore, implies a certain relation between R and N. And I will say, therefore, that R 1 minus R over K minus C over R times r times n is equal approximately to 0. Okay? And I will, instead of writing this way, I will put a tilde to say that this is only valid in this limit. It's not a general relation between both of them. It's valid in the limit where the epsilon is very small. Okay? So then, then you get this. And now you can write. Uh, a relation between R and N, calculate R in terms of N, and put it here. Okay? So this is some algebra. First, you can cancel this guys, and then you will have. Okay, let's go for this left side. You will have 1 minus R over K minus c over r times n equal to 0. Therefore, r over k is equal to 1 minus c over r times n. Therefore, r is equal to k times 1 minus c over r and tilde. Okay. 
me see if this is correct. Yes, it is. Okay, so now let me um, re erase. Where is it? Okay, I, I will get this out here. Now, as I have r in terms of n, I can go here and write the value of r in terms of n. And therefore, this is an equation for n alone. It's a single species dynamics because we kind of scaled out the resource. And now the question is, is does it have anything to do with the logistic? Okay? Because we, we started talking about uh, intraspecific competition with the logistics. Now, now, let's see what happens. Okay? So I will have dn beta equal to b c over m times n times r, which is k, I would put the k here, times 1 minus c over r. Let's put the tildes because we are always in the approximation here, minus n. Okay? Now, this has a term which is linear, linear, and quadratic. So there, this will be the logistic equation. Let's just let us work out this uh, till the till the very end of it. So now this is just some algebra, okay? So this is not very important. I will write down the linear part and the in the quadratic part separately. So the linear part is. Um, Um, yeah. Did I make a mistake? No. Oh. Okay. There's some difference here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had made. A okay. So this is k times. Uh, so this is n tilde, which multiplies k, b, c over m. Uh, this is this part minus minus one. Okay. Minus k b c over m times c squared r n tilde squared, okay? Now, I can write this in the following way. I pick this up here, k b c over m minus 1 times n tilde 1 minus k b c squared over m r divided by this, okay? by k b c over m minus 1 times n tilde. Then I call this, let's, what's your favorite Greek number or uh, letter? Let's say lambda, okay? So this is the, the growth rate for for n tilde, the growth rate of the, of, the, of the consumer, the effective growth rate of the consumer, and here what you have is n1 minus something times n, which is the logistic. So this thing here, here is 1 over the carrying capacity, the effective carrying capacity. So let's call this, this thing here, Okay, where can I raise? C 
So, okay, so I will call this lambda, which is the new, the, the effective growth rate, and this here is, is, I will call it kappa, which is the, the effective carrying capacity for the, which will be one over this, okay? This is n over kappa. So it will be m times r times k b c over m minus 1 divided by, by k b c squared, okay? So you can still, uh, if you want, you can cancel some of them and so on. Doesn't, doesn't matter now, okay? So wh what, what does it actually mean is, uh, let me see if this was correct. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it would be easier to, okay, we can get a better insight here if I, I just <laughs> multiply everything. I write this R times K B C minus M divided by K B C squared, which can be nice cancelled. It will be give you R times uh, this one gives you one over C okay, minus M over C. Okay, and uh, and and uh, I, I forgot the k, r over k. Um, no, not here. That's, that wasn't correct. This cancelled, and you divided this. You have m. Oh, oh, this is wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. This is wrong. I forgot to divide here. This was R times N divided by K B C squared. Okay. So this is the new carrying capacity. That's the effective value of the carrying capacity for the consumer. And now what have I achieved with this? is that on the, the slow time scale, the consumer resource dynamics implied by this model, the, on the slow time scale, you just grow logistically and you can calculate the current capacities from the parameters of the consumer resource dynamics. And, you, and this means also that I have, here I have effectively scaled out the resource. The resource, now we have a one single species dynamics. So this says to us that for systems that have strongly different time scales, we can always look for the long, uh, for the slow, and for the fast time scales, we look for the uh, slow time scales, and in this, in this limit, the consumer can behave a, as a single species with logistic growth and with parameters with for for the growth rate and for the current capacity that can be calculated starting from this system. So this is an approximation. And this is, again, this is a way of reconcile what we have seen at the very beginning, that we have con single species dynamics with, consumer, with, with logistic growth. But we can also uh, look at consumer resource dynamics, which have oscillation and so on. But if we have that the, the the growth of the resource is much faster than the, uh, the one of, of the consumer. In this case, the 
logistic equation is a good approximation for this consumer interest dynamics. Right? So that's a way to save the, uh, the concept of carrying capacity and of, uh, wh where's the mic? Uh, concept of carrying capacity and the logistic equation. Um, is there a limit for the difference between AM and R, where mm. the consumers stop to work to act as a single species? S so, yeah, uh, this is what we what we do. This is strictly well, well. So this is okay. There's not a it's precise value, okay? Because you know they are always coupled in the stricto sense of they are always coupled. Yes, okay. Now, what, what I did is an example of what's called asymptotic expansions. Asymptotic expansions is I want to know, uh, I have a small parameter in the problem. Okay? And I want to know the limit of my equations when this small parameter is really, really very small. So strictly speaking, this is an approximation which is called zero order approximation. Because I could have done something else. I could have written that, that, um, that my, I, I could have done something, but okay, I have not any more written, that I, I had this equation, yes? G, we had this equation. It was like this. Okay. I had this one. Then I could have said, I want now that R is R tilde plus some correction, which is epsilon times some other function, which I will call r tilde 1. I could have done this. And then the same for n. Plug this here in, and then compare order by order of the epsilon's equation. So the one equation will be with epsilon equal to 0, so the, all the terms that do not have epsilon have to be cancelled. Then you look at the next one. You have epsilon times something, which has to be 0. Then you have the, the next order. That's, that's called an order. So that what I calculated is the, this, the order 0 of an expansion. Okay? And <coughs> this means that... Uh, uh, I could go on and calculate in next orders, which would be the corrections to the logistic equation coming from the fact that maybe epsilon is small, but not so small. Okay? Maybe it's, it's just in the limit of you don't know. Okay? So this can be done. I mean, it's not part of the, of the, of the course to do the whole asymptotic expansions, but it is part of the, of the the course of this, uh, of this uh, lecture to call attention that when very different time scales, have, when you have species that have very different time scales, generation time or whatever you want, okay, uh, then maybe the system can be always simplified in such a way that you can have the slow and fast dynamics, and you don't want to fast to look at the fast. You look at only at the s at the slow, and uh, and your system gets pretty much simplified. We had two equations here, and now we have a logistic. We have just well ugly parameters, but never mind. It's in the logistic, okay? So now, yeah, very well, yeah. Uh, could you just explain the last equation for us again, please? What equation? The last one. The logistic equation. This one. 
Yeah. yeah. So, I just, I mean, there's nothing to explain. That, that's this equation. I mean, here I have one part which is linear and one part is quadratic. So I just wrote the linear part, okay, and the nonlinear, which is this one, times this here, okay? Yeah? Then I'm, I've put n in evidence here, and I just write this here outside, and I multiply. I, and I multiply and divide here this by this value, which is n. Squared now, I have the n in evidence, there's only one n, and there's the complicated constant here, okay? So we don't want to explore now exactly how the, the carrying cap is so in one over this is k. And if I call this lambda, then you have just gn dt equal to lambda n 1 minus n tilde over kappa, which I call kappa, this one, okay, which is the logistic equation, which has a solution and which goes to the carrying capacity, which is now kappa. Okay? That's it. So what I'm showing is that the logistic equation is a limit of this, this system. Okay? It's a limit case of this system and when you have two very different time scales in the problem, right? So this one is showing only when the, um, the, the renovation of resources is much faster than the, yeah. okay. Yes, exactly. That's this case. Yeah, that's this case, okay. yeah. That, that's, that means that this, this R here is, is, very, is, is much uh, bigger than this M, right? That's what we assumed, M over R. So now, one of the assumptions that I made, and it seemed to be the, the easiest thing to make, was that the resource was bi um, biotic, and be meaning that it has a, a dynamics in itself here, like a logistic, okay? And what if the resource is not, not biotic? How would you model uh, uh, resource that is uh, abiotic, okay? So I want just to make this very, very uh, very fast because uh, it's a lot of calculations. Uh, just let, run to down, down the equation and then the method would be the same. I mean, you get a lot of uh, terms and uh, it's, it's, it's boring to do all the math Direct. Okay, so in order to, to model some abiotic case, we will suppose that the resource is now, has now a different equation. And, the, and obviously the question would be, Will I still be able to obtain the logistic equation from, from the consumer resource dynamics in the limit, in the same limit? So I will have the same equation for for the same equation for the uh, consumer, but now I will say that the resource is can be taught in two ways, abiotic or managed through, thin, through some laboratory experiment. So you have, a, I will call it E, I, I have an influx of resources. So it could be abiotic in the sense, for instance, water, that's just not rainfall, okay? Or could be also I have, I have, I have a, of, of, uh, experiment and I feed every day with some intake. So th the resource is being put into the system. Okay? So this is A, so then there's a certain decay rate which we call E times R. 
So the, the reserves, and if this was water, this is evaporation, okay? Or if this is, 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 is a, some, a, some nutrient that's been input, there's also the degeneration of this input. So uh, minus C times R times M, okay? And now, I could do the same kind of thing um, what did I, do? I could I could go on and write um, I think it's better to show this on the on the paper that I used and it would be easier so. So this is a nice paper, which, uh, which has a, a very nice name. When, when can, that's Journal of Theoretical Biology, it's a leading journal in theoretical biology. When can a single species density dependent model capture the dynamics of consumer research system? So this is already a little bit old, I mean, 10 years, almost 10 years. So, and uh, um, this, this is uh, where I took this uh, kind of thing, well, okay. So this was the biotic thing and so on. And for the abiotic case, this the abiotic case. So this is this, um, this equation. Then uh, in this case, you have to that the, the you have assumed a little bit differently that, that M is much smaller than E, okay? So E is the rate of uh, degeneration or evaporation of the source, okay? So uh, we can assume bo both of them are dimensions one over time, okay? So these are the two time scales in the sims, M and E. And then you can do the same thing. And as we did here, so you can have an approximate solution to the, to the system and find a consumer, only consumer dynamics. Yeah. Uh, just the the I is the influx, right? Influx, yes. And then now, I'm not sure you call the rate of degradation. What rate of? Uh, rate of degeneration, rate of e. degradation yeah. is E. It's E. Okay. Yeah, because you see, this is kind of death term, yeah? And mortality. So what is mortality of the research? Can be. We are thinking here mortal, um, our resource that is abiotic. What is mortality of abiotic? It's mortality of abiotic is 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 the, the the unavailability of certain parts. So typically, if you think of water, means a part of the water evaporates, and this would be the evaporation. If you think it's some nutrient, then it means you are, you are feeding your population with some nutrients means that the nutrient is not eternal. The nutrient can degenerate by itself, even not before being consumed, okay? And this is the usual consumer resource dynamics. Okay, yeah. Uh, two questions. Uh, what is C, again, in the CRN C part of the equation? C is a constant that is connected to, that's the attack rate, okay? so. Here, the resource is like the vitamin that we had, so, yeah? So, if I have, uh, uh, the, this is the linear Holling type one functional response, and this term divided by R, okay? so C times N is, in, if I take N equal to one, then C is the number of resource individuals consumed by unit time by one predator, by one consumer. 
Okay, and what about the B at the upper one? B is the B. This is the, the, the what used to be the, the predator. It's now called consumer. So the consumer grows only because it's consuming the, the resource, but it has to have an efficiency. And B is the efficiency. Okay, I get it. Uh, the last question is, what is the, is there a dimension, is there a unit for I and E? Is there any? Uh, dimension, uh, unity. Okay, so uh, this is, it's, it's uh, the dimensions of I is uh, resource over time. So it's the, 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 the speed which you feed your, your system or, or it's the, the amount of rainfall per, per unit time. Okay, and E has dimensions one over time. Okay, because then you have the same dimensions here and here. So E, one over E has dimensions of time. It's connected to, to uh, the, the time it takes for the resource to degrade or to evaporate or to, to go out of the system. Okay. And the T in the I and the E, are they the same value? Or the the T? The I and E. One I is resource over time, the other is one over time. Is the T in each of them the same? Which T? The time? Yeah, yes. Yeah, all of them are calculated at time T. So I I'm, I'm, I'm will use I to be a constant, okay? But the dimensions of I are populations per time. So it be set number of individuals per hours, per days, or per years, okay? And E is, is times R, okay? Has to have the same dimensions here. So therefore, E is, to, is one over time dimension, okay? okay? So we don't have even time to do all the calculations, but the, okay, there's a more, uh, one more question. And, and uh, guys, today I will uh, stop a little bit earlier. I have to, like, 10 minutes uh, b before the normal time. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, so the E and E there, it's an inflow and outflow. Hmm? Uh, the a inf and one is influx, the other is, uh, is yeah, outflow. Yes, and yeah. outflow. So how do I consider... Um, a resource like water uh, that is uh, taking the example on Brazilian sem arid that is really uh, has really variability. Yeah. How do I consider this on an equation with and so really uh, time uh, we have uh, difficult to measure the time of inflows and outflows because uh, inflows could be in years. And outflows could be in, in days. So, inflow, it's, it's just, if it's water, it's something that you, you can measure on a daily basis. It's just the rainfall of the day, okay? And, but usually it's not important to look at this at the scale of days. For instance, if, uh, uh, so you, you could say, okay, I will use the average rainflow over, because it's very big variability, but it's just use the, the mean value, okay? And um, so it will depend on what kind of problem you are interested in, what kind of, uh, of time scale you are looking for. So I could depend on time in this case. Could be seasonal, for instance, if you want. But now, I'm, I'm not considering this case now because it complicates everything, okay? I'm just having a constant influx, okay? Can, can, you can also think that's, that's kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, chemostat dynamics, okay? Could be something like that also, okay? And people also simulate this kind of situation, for instance, with experiments that I've seen for, with mites, okay? So that the mites and they have predator prey dynamics and so on, but they, 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 they live on, a, on some substract and you put every day food for them. Okay? Now, if you do the same thing as with the, 
I, I've done with this system, you do the same calculation. It's a, the small epsilon, and finding the effective equation for this system, you don't get the logistic. You get something which looks like this. Here, here the guy has rescaled a lot of things, okay? But this equation here is not the logistic, okay? Oops. It is something else. And it depends on a parameter, which is rho, which is 1 minus beta over beta, and beta was defined before somewhere, and it's a complicated combination of, I'm um, not so complicated, it's a combination of the parameters, okay? So, in this case, the limit, the asymptotic limit of this system, which has this different dynamics of resource, it's not anymore a logistic resource, has a different limiting case. It, it gives you this equation. Now you still would like to say, well, I, I wanted still to see, is this very different from the logistic equation or is it just very similar? Well, for sure, you could say that if this parameter rho here, which is a combination of a lot of things, okay, we don't care about wh which combination it is now, okay? but if this rho, which is, uh, uh, is very small, so uh, we already had some epsilon small, let's say the epsilon, one other thing to this, this rho is small, then one plus rho times n is approximately equal to one, and then what is left here is the logistic, again. But if rho is not small, then this is different from the logistic, right? So, and you can go and solve this on a computer just to have an idea, okay? So that's what I have done here. I've uh, done uh, uh, function f uh, um, here. It's, it's just, this is the logistic. And then I modified the logistic with this different term here, okay? But I, I, I have put a carrying capacity here. The, the, guy, the guy before also had a carrying capacity, but he scaled it out, okay? So this is the new equation that is, replaces the logistic in the case of an abiotic uh, resource. And I solve both of them and I plot them in the same, on the same uh, plot, in the same graph. So um, if you run this for some arbitrary con initial values, you see there is a difference. The x is the logistic and the y is the other one. The other one has a, even a name, I think it's, uh, yeah, Smith, Smith and Birch have to have written this first. So there's a difference. Well, at the end, you go to the current capacity, okay? <laughs> at the end, you go to the same point, okay? And, and they say, oh, oh good. That's, that's, that means that this is a second equation. Maybe it's not so useful. It's complicated form and so on. So maybe it's not, not that good. And uh, this uh, clearly depends on, on the value of r. And here we are just putting r equal to 5. Let's see what happens if I put a 10 and run it. See? So you get more and more differences here. And now if r is small, then this term here will be close to 1, and you should not see much differences. So if I put r equal to 1, let's see what happens. So we should run this for a longer time. Let's say 20. So the differences start to decrease. And now if I put a very small value of r, maybe I will have to, let's say I would put point, uh, 0.2, let's see. And I have to plot it for much more longer. Let's say 200, no, 200 is too much, like 100. And the difference almost disappears. And so this second equation is similar to the 
logistic equation had some dif differences. But at the end of the day, they have the same asymptotic value, the carrying capacity, the new carrying capacity. Yeah? Therefore, people don't use the second one <laughs> at the end. Why? Because this would make only differences in this intermediate uh, uh, time um, here, at this region. Okay? And if, uh, if the parameter here were a little bit larger, then you see it better, let's say, like this. 0.8. So no, no big differences in the dynamics and more complicated equation, the second one. Okay, so you say, okay, let's stay with the logistic because lo although the limit for, for uh, single species dynamics coming from consumer resource dynamics, which originates from abiotic resources, it's not exactly the logistic, but the general behavior of the solutions is very similar to the logistic. Therefore, we should say, OK, then um, uh, stay with the logistic. So we save the logistic from hell. So this, this class is meant to tell you that what, because why I'm insisting on the logistic? Because you probably have a lots of, of your projects and so on. You keep going and putting carrying capacities everywhere. Okay? And that's, that's a very useful way to, to do the, the things. And so I'm actually showing that even if you have, you have consumer resource dynamics, you have okay, a certain limit of different time scales of consumer resource dynamics, the logistic is a very good approximation of the dynamics of the consumer. And that's fine. Okay? So you can use carrying capacities in your model. Okay? You are, if, uh, unless you have some reason to think that you are very far from this, this, uh, from this uh, limit. Okay? But uh, most of the time you have some, some for instance, you, where do you put carrying capacities in the in the um, in the in the models? Usually, you have the something which is resource or competitors that have that that you are not describing a part of of your system. You are not describing the consumer's resource dynamics. Therefore, you just put them in uh, carrying capacity in a logistic term. So this is valid. In, in certain limits, it's, it's okay to do this, and you can actually simplify your models by using carrying capacities, always thinking that the resource that is the resource that creates the carrying capacity should have a much faster time scale for the population to 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 to, to change than the um, than the consumer. Yeah. So, okay. Now, that will be all for today. Tomorrow, next, is okay. Now, we will look for consumer resource dynamics again. Two consumers, one resource. What happens? Will there be competitive exclusion? Will there be something like uh, strong and Weak competition, what will happen? So that's the next point. Okay, so you, somebody raised the hand. Ah, yeah. Wait, uh, the mic. Not just to be sure, um, we don't usually use this equation, right? We Not use usually, the, yeah. We use the logistics. Yeah, most of so the time. So all of the equations we learned today, we usually don't use them. We use the logistic. Yes, most of the time. OK, we, we, you use the, uh, what, what, okay. so this is a consumer resource equation, OK? And, and it's a very particular one where the, the, the resource is, is not originating itself. It's just been an influx external, OK? So if you have a system, for instance, vegetation dynamics depending on rainfall, 
on, on, and then, on, then you have something like this. But otherwise not, okay? And what I say in this, uh, okay, now, suppose that this is, this is actually good. And then you go for the same limit of very different time scales. What you get here is not exactly the logistic. You get a different equation, which was the equation that I was, was somewhere here, okay? So this is not a logistic, okay? It has a different term here than the logistic. But when you plot the solutions, you see that there's no big change. I mean, there's, they are very similar, the solutions. They go up and it's a little bit different on the, on the intermediate phase, but both of them go to the same carrying capacity, everything. Therefore, well, why care with the complicated equation when the logistic is much simpler? Okay? Unless you could have very precise, very, very precise uh, uh, measurements, then you could maybe say, okay, I, I really want to distinguish them. But, uh, so, again, the logistic equation can be explained by a more mechanistic dynamics, which is consumer resource dynamics, it's mechanistic and not phenomenological. It can be explained and it's the limiting case of consumer resource dynamics, where you have an effective single species dynamics for the consumer. Okay, so many emotions tomorrow with, with our discussion about competitive exclusion from the perspective of resource, uh, um, uh, consumer resource dynamic, not anymore from the perspective of the logical Volterra equations. Okay, so uh, as I told you, I will stop a little bit earlier. So, okay, see you tomorrow.